Hello friends, welcome to my channel Eccentric Learning. I hope you have gone through the first part of the trigonometric topic where I have covered what are trigonometric ratios, what are the sign of trigonometric ratios in various quadrants, the values of trigonometric ratios for some standard angles and so on. In case if you haven't gone through that video till now, the link has been given in the description box, please go through it. Also, if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. In today's video, we are going to see the graph of some trigonometric functions and some important formulas. So let us start with today's video. Well, it is always helpful to know the graph of the trigonometric functions. So let us see the graph of some of the trigonometric functions. Let us begin with y equal to sin x. The graph of y equal to sin x is given by this curve, which is a sinusoidal curve and which ranges between minus 1 to 1. We can also verify some of the values of this curve from the table that we have seen in the last video. That is at x equal to 0, sin 0 is 0. At x equal to 90, sin 90 is 1. At x equal to 180, sin of 180 is 0. At x equal to minus 90, sin of minus 90 is minus 1. At x equal to minus 180, sin of minus 180 is 0 and so on. Since y equal to sin x function oscillates between minus 1 to 1, so the range of this function would be between minus 1 to 1. In a similar way, the graph of y equal to cos x function is given by this curve, which also oscillates between minus 1 to 1. We can also verify some of the values of this curve from the table that we have seen in the last video. That is at x equal to 0, cos 0 is 1. At x equal to 90, cos 90 is 0. At x equal to 180, cos 180 would be minus 1. In a similar way, at x equal to minus 90, cos minus 90 would be 0. At x equal to minus 180, cos of minus 180 would be minus 1 and so on. Since y equal to cos x function also oscillates between minus 1 to 1, so the range of y equal to cos x function is also between minus 1 to 1, both minus 1 and 1 included. In a similar way, we can see the graph of y equal to 10x, which is given by this curve. That is, the value of y equal to 10x ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. We can also verify some of its values at x equal to 0, 10 0 is 0. At x equal to 90, 10 90 is extending to infinity. At x equal to minus 90, 10 of minus 90 is extending to minus infinity and so on. Since the graph of y equal to 10x ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity, so the range of y equal to 10x function is minus infinity to plus infinity. So these are the graph of these three functions y equal to sin x, y equal to cos x and y equal to 10x. If you are interested, you can also go through the graph of the other trigonometric functions like y equal to cortex, sec x and cosec x and you can see how the graph of those functions differ from the graph of these functions. But I would suggest to you all to remember the graph of at least these three functions as it would be very much helpful. Also, there are a few trigonometric identities which are worth remembering. Those are sine of minus theta is same as minus sine of theta, cos of minus theta is same as cos of theta and tan of minus theta is same as minus tan of theta. For example, sine of minus 30 degree would be same as minus sine of 30 degree and we know sine 30 is 1 by 2 so this would be minus 1 by 2. In a similar way, sine of minus 90 would be same as minus sine of 90 and this would be minus 1. 
which we can also verify from this graph as at x equal to minus 90, the value of sine of minus 90 is minus one. In a similar way, 10 of minus 45 degree would be same as minus 10 of 45 degree, which would be minus one, which we can also verify from this graph. That is at x equal to 45, that is somewhere here, the value of 10 function is a positive value, which is plus one. And at x equal to minus 45, that is somewhere here, the value of 10 function is a negative value, which is minus one and so on. But cos of minus theta is given by cos theta. For example, cos of minus 45 degree would be same as plus cos of 45 degree, which would be one upon root two, which we can also see in this graph that is at x equal to 45, that is somewhere here, the value of cos function is a positive value. And at x equal to minus 45, that is somewhere here, the value of cos function is again a positive value, which is one upon root two. So sine of any negative angle is minus sine of that angle cos of any negative angle is cos of that angle and tan of any negative angle is minus tan of that angle. Now there are some important formulas which are useful to remember. Suppose there are two angles A and B, then the sine of the summation of these two angles A and B is given by sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. For example, say if we want to find the value of sin 75 degree. So this can be written as sin of 45 plus 30 as 45 plus 30 is 75. Now we can use this formula directly. That is sin of A plus B as sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. Here in our case, a is 45 and B is 30. So this can be written as sine 45 into cos 30 plus cos 45 into sine 30. Now we know the values of sine and cos of the standard angles. So we can put the values directly, which would be sine 45 as one by root two cos 30 as root three by two plus cos 45 would be one by root two and sine 30 would be one by two, which if we simplify, this would be one upon two root two times of root three plus one. So in this way, we can use the formula of sine of a plus b to find the value of sine 75 degree. In a similar way, sine of a minus b can be written as sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Also, cos of a plus b is given by cos a into cos b minus sin a into sin b. And cos of a minus b is given by cos a into cos b plus sin a into sin b. In a similar way, tan of a plus b is given by tan a plus tan b upon 1 minus tan a into tan b. And tan of a minus b is given by tan a minus tan b upon 1 plus tan a into tan b. Now, if in this formula, if we put a equal to b equal to theta, in that case, this would be sine 2 theta, which would be sine theta into cos theta plus cos theta into sine theta, which would be giving us 2 sine theta cos theta. So that is sine 2 theta can be written as 2 sin theta into cos theta. In a similar way, if in this formula, if we put a equal to b equal to theta, in that case, cos 2 theta would be cos square theta minus sin square theta, which can further be written as 2 cos square theta minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sin square theta, simply by using sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. In a similar way, if we put a equal to b equal to theta in this formula, in that case, this would be 10 to theta would be 2 
टेन थीटा अपॉन वन माइनस टेन स्क्वायर थीटा सो इफ यू आर एबल टू रिमेम्बर दिस फॉर्मूलाज वी वुड बी ऑल्सो एबल टू रिमेम्बर द फॉर्मूला फॉर साइन टू थीटा कॉस टू थीटा एंड टेन टू थीटा Also, there are triple angle formulas like sine three theta, cos three theta, and tan three theta, which is given by sine three theta as three sine theta minus four sine cube theta, cos three theta as four cos cube theta minus three cos theta, and tan three theta as three tan theta minus tan cube theta upon one minus three tan square theta. These formulas. Are derived simply by writing three theta as theta plus two theta and using these formulas. So, if you are interested, you can apply these formulas and can derive these results. But instead of getting into the derivation, I would suggest you to simply remember these formulas, which would be sufficient. Now. let us see some application of the trigonometric ratios suppose if we have a triangle abc such that the side opposite to angle a is small a the side opposite to angle b is small b and the side opposite to angle c is small c in that case the area of the triangle can be written as half of the product of these two sides and the sine of the angle between these two sides Which in this case is angle A, so the area is written as half of BC into sine. In a similar way, if we consider the two sides as A and B, in that case the angle between these two sides would be angle C, so the area can be written as half of AB into sine C. In a similar way, if we consider the two sides. to be a and c in that case the angle between them is angle b so the area can be written as half of ac into sin b also there are few other standard results which are worth remembering the first is sin rule which states the ratio a upon sin a would be equal to b upon sin b would be equal to c upon sin c and this ratio would be equal to 2r where r is the circum radius we would be discussing in details what is a circum radius when we would be starting the geometry topic but as of now simply remember that this ratio would be equal to twice the circum radius also there is a cosine rule which we can apply whenever we need to find the angles of a triangle and when all the sides of the triangle are given to us which is given by cos of angle a as b square plus c square minus a square upon 2bc cos of angle b as a square plus c square minus b square upon 2ac and cos of angle c as a square plus b square minus c square upon 2ab for example say if the sides of the triangle is given by say a equal to 6 b equal to 7 and c equal to 8 and we need to find the angle c of this triangle say in that case cos of c can be written as a square plus b square minus c square upon 2ab which would be 6 square plus 7 square minus 8 square upon 2 into 6 into 7 which if we simplify this would be 1 upon 4 so angle c can be written as cos inverse of 1 upon 4 so whenever we need to find the angles of a triangle and all the sides of the triangle are given to us in that case we can directly use this cosine rule so i would suggest you all to remember these formulas that we have seen as these formulas would be very much handy whenever we would be solving trigonometric questions Now let us see this question where we need to find the value of this expression containing the trigonometric ratios. So here we have been given as sine twenty plus cos twenty whole square times of one minus sine forty minus cos square forty, and we need to find the value of this expression. We know 
a plus b whole square is given by a square plus b square plus 2ab. So this can be written as sine square 20 plus cos square 20 plus 2 into sine 20 into cos 20. And this is multiplied by 1 minus sine 40. And here we have cos square 40. We know sine square theta plus cos square theta is given by 1. So sine square 20 plus cos square 20 can be written as 1. And this is plus 2 sine 20 times of cos 20. And this is multiplied by 1 minus sine 40 minus cos square 40. We have also seen sine 2 theta is given by 2 sine theta times of cos theta. And here we have 2 sine 20 times of cos 20. So this can be written as sine 40. So this expression would be 1 plus sine 40 times of 1 minus sine 40 and minus cos square 40. Now this is of the form of a plus b into a minus b. So this can be written as a square minus b square which would be 1 minus sine square 40 minus cos square 40. Now we can write it as 1 minus sine square 40 plus cos square 40. And again, this is of the form of sine square theta plus cos square theta. So this would be 1. So this would be 1 minus 1, which would be 0. So the value of this expression would be 0. So in this way, we can apply the trigonometric formulas for such kind of expressions containing the trigonometric ratios. So that's it for today's video in which we have seen the graph of some trigonometric functions and some important formulas. And in the next video, we are going to see heights and distances topic where we'd be covering what are angle of elevation, angle of depression and so on. I hope you have learned something in today's video, but if you have any confusion, you can watch the video again. And still, if you have any doubts, you can put it in the comment box. I will try to answer each one of your queries. So if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. I will see you all in my next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and keep growing. Thank you.